Hey, what's up? Scott Balkin here with Imagination Creation Films, and we also have... Bill Howard, how are you doing? Doing great. Hey, we're starting off our week one review of your submissions, and we've been, like we say, we've been a little bit delayed trying to figure the whole method out. We wanted to give a little more time for people to put submissions out there and just try to figure out the best way that we can share those uh, opinions that we have with you. And, and Bill, do you have anything to add there? Uh, please forgive me for any mistakes that I make. <laughs> That's right. Make sure you forgive him for his mistakes. I won't make any because I'm editing it. <laughs> you are the cinematographer in this group. <laughs> All right, so the first video that, that I'm going to talk about is the video submission by Kimberly. And here it is right here. Yeah. Yeah, so Kimberly, you did a perfect pan there showing the material that you had. And so your story was, was, was timed right too. You had this nice soft kind of rose petals down on the floor. You wouldn't do fast. You went very nice and slow as a romantic or, you know, the colors of red would, would, would tend to emulate. So you slowly reveal what is it? It's, it's more petal up as in the shape of a heart. So that was a great example of a pan uh, using both colors and the speed of the pan to tell that story. I think that's a really good use. Bill, do you have any thoughts on that? I mean, I agree. I thought it was a, a great, you know, what, six, seven second clip. Uh, it, it can tell a story. It, it will fit in, in a movie. It will fit for stop photography and videography. I mean, it, I thought it was great. And yes, the red flowers on the light colored wood really made the, uh, the petals stand out, which, you know, it, it keeps your eye in it. it. It was a great clip. I thought there, I didn't notice at the tail end, there was a little bit of shake, but you know, I, I don't know how, uh, Kimberly filmed it and we're all learning this. So I really don't have any problems with that either. Yeah, and I think it's a it's a good thing to point out uh, as we as we move forward with this. If people would like put a little bit of a description of how they shot it, just just so other people can be uh, can understand. Because like when we talk a little bit about uh, some of the other clips later, uh, I noticed some people were using photography tripods for a, a nice smooth pan, and and I get it. It's 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 not easy, but a little bit of practice will help that little jitter. And so we don't know if Kimberly was using a video or a photo tripod or, you know, just did somebody walk by on a, on a hardwood floor and make it shake? We don't know. It's interesting, but you know, six or seven takes like that, maybe you get a good one. And that's just, that's just a good point to, to, to make there. Thanks, Bill. You got anything else on that one? While we're on, while we're on hers, um, correct me if I'm wrong. Usually the slower, especially if you were shoot higher frame rate, such as 120 frames per second, it reduces that jitter too, correctly? Well, well jitter, jitter comes from a couple of different things. Uh, the, the higher the shutter speed, the more jitter you're going to get as you're moving across because it's basically, they, they um, I forget the term that they call it, but it's, it is basically you get a picture, a picture, a picture, a picture. Whereas if you use a shutter speed that is about 180 degrees of your uh, actual film rate. So for instance, if you're filming at 30 frames a second, you'd use a 1 60th of a second shutter speed. What that does is that allows for half of it to become motion blur. And so when it plays back, you get a little bit of that streaking. It's the same thing that would happen to you when uh, you uh, like look your eyes really fast. You get, you get a blur as it goes. So motion blur is a great way to uh, to reduce the, the stuttering that happens that way. And a hint for the viewers, we are going to discuss frame rate later on in these challenges. For sure. So, Bill, uh, do you want to uh, take the next one? Yes, sir. Um, yeah, someone take a look at Gerald's video in which he was, uh, he took a video in a bedroom. We can watch it right here. What I really liked about this guy was we had the light rays coming in and he captured those really well in the pan. So it, it just brought warmth to the room. And in my opinion, uh, it was a good smooth follow through throughout. 
and you know we've we've kind of talked with Gerald. Uh, he does a lot of real estate photography and adding this uh, repertoire. I think would be awesome. I will come back in just a minute with something I saw wrong, but what do you think about it? Well, you know, it was a really good use of of trying to enlarge the space. Real estate is is somewhat tricky compared to like typical filmmaking because real estate, you're trying to do two things. You're trying to a display this house in such a way that it shows off all of the house or the room. But secondarily, the story that you're trying to convey is you need to own this house. And so this was a really nice way of creating that warmth. And, and that is something to grab you, the potential buyer, and want to buy this house because, boom, we hit the sun rays. Oh, I'm instantly thinking of first morning, the sun's coming in. Wouldn't it be great to come running across the floor or maybe the kids pitter-patter in and wake you up in the morning? That's, that's the kind of, of impact you're doing just by hitting that light ray and then just kind of moving over. So I was I was – I thought that did a really good job, both of color and of uh, the speed of the pan and adding to that story that you need to do for real estate and or filmmaking. As far as um, what I see that might make it better and it may not either. One thing in real estate photography that we look at is to make sure our verticals are vertical. And at the beginning, it almost seemed like because we were shooting wide that it had a little curvature in it but then as it as the frame came through I noticed like the uh, the back of the bed and the window sill all of that was perfectly straight so it just may have been the way I saw it but that that's one of the few things I see that might could improve uh, the other is I would like to see it come from the wall and then back into the bed and into the light rays I wonder how that would look with finishing off at the light rays yeah, it, it might be an interesting take. Um, I mean, I uh, I don't know. It would be interesting to see both and just see which way they played. Uh, on your, your vertical lines, yeah, in, in every type of architectural photography, videography, cinematography, you want those lines as vertical as possible. Uh, rectilinear, I believe is the term. And wide-angle lenses tend to bow them out or try to kick them out and, and make them distort in such a way. Yeah, it's a good call-out. And, you know, another thing, I, to kind of correct some of that, I guess you could actually crop the video down. You could. Uh, image size. And uh, one other way to do it in camera is to make sure that the camera is midway between the ceiling and the floor. If you're high, it's going to accent those that vertical getting off a little. Right. And, and for those that, that are trying to understand that, it's it's – the lenses are circular and the center point is the most accurate of a lens. And the further you go out, the more that curvature is correcting, which means there's going to be more errors in a lens. And an error is curving distortions, that less sharp chromatic aberration, that kind of stuff. So the further in you're using that lens, the more straight those lines are going to be, the more accurate everything will be. And like you said, if you crop in, you'll notice less of that. I, um, so Scott, what about your second video? All right, so my second video is going to be from Abu. And uh, let's watch that right now. Okay, so first off on this, I thought it was a really nice story that was being told. You're, you're basically slowly panning and showing how many kids are at the table. It's, it, is, uh, it, it is a good use of a pan, and it just kind of broadens that story a little bit. Now, what I was pointing out to him uh, and, and to everyone else was I wasn't really – excited about the the lens placement so usually what you try to do and rule of thirds is something we'll talk about because it's a rule that you should try to follow but you can also completely break it when it suits the purpose but the rule of thirds means that you're lining up on one third in one way or another so I usually like to keep the eyes somewhere around the top third 
we, we need to find out what are we focusing on? What is the story? Is the story that you have kids all sitting at the table, all eating breakfast, or is the story the breakfast? So if it was the breakfast, I would want that shot just a little tighter and just focusing on maybe you just got hands flowing in the, uh, you know, hands lifting up from the cereal bowls as you pan around. And the idea there is it's a delicious cereal. Everybody wants some or whatever it is. If you are highlighting that you have a bunch of kids and family at the table, well, I want to see more of their face. So I don't want to cut their face off here. I want to get their eyes somewhere in that top third. So when I'm moving around, the, the, the human eye always goes to human eyes because we crave interaction. And so when we see children, if we see a face, we want to see their eye. We want their eye to be right in that top level. So my, my comment would be to reframe that as best as possible. Now, I know Abu had some issues in that room where he couldn't go further back with the camera to get it wider. And that's, that's reasonable and fair. What I, what I mentioned in, in film, we cheat. So if we don't have room to go back, we push the table away and give ourselves that room and just reset up the shot. It's done all the time. It, it was a great pan, and I think it has a great learning potential in there. So, again, don't take any of my comments as, as bad. That's not what this is about. This is about learning and improving. So I, that's my take. Bill, what do you think? I, I totally agree. It was almost as if the framing was caught between which one do I want to emphasize. And uh, there's a small, just a very small portion at the bottom of the frame that maybe he could have brought the lens up some, uh, or maybe have the camera a little higher, and that would get the, the more of the face as well as what they're doing. Um, the lighting was a little dim, and one thing that I thought would be kind of cool was at the tail end of the uh, clip there, We've got the, this backlit, and I thought a silhouette on something like that would be kind of cool as well. Yeah, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of options you could do with this story. You know, maybe that story is the, the cereal or just the coming together as a family uh, and eating breakfast. And you know what might be fun is that very last person there, they push their bowl away, they're done. And now you signified everybody sitting around the table, they're all eating, boom, now it's over, and you can move on to your next scene. But, you know, like, like the, the lighting, I mean, we, we don't expect anybody to be perfect. If you're perfect, then you're teaching us, because, you know, that's, that's really what it boils down to, is we're, we're all trying to help each other. I mean, I agree, and, and I look forward to seeing what he's got with his uh, other videos and going over there as well. Um, but as far as my next video... It is with, forgive me if I mispronounce this, Timo or Timo. I'm going to say Timo for this. Um, and it kind of uh, gives the, the flow of what the scene is about, I guess. Let's watch it right here. As far as what I liked about this, Scott, um, I like the fact that you had the lady looking through the telescope and then the pan kind of revealed what she was looking at. Uh, you don't, you know, it, it flows with the scene. You, you see her, your interest is drawn, what is she seeing, and then you've got the, uh, the landscape and the city below. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's exactly what goes on in the human brain. If we see someone looking in a telescope, we know that looking at the person looking at the telescope is not what we're interested in. We want to know what that person is looking at. So that was a perfect use of a pan. Take it, boom, now we get to see it. So you've caught our eye because we want to know what has her interest. And when you reveal it with a pan, now we have it. Perfect use of storytelling. As far as it looked like it was a smooth flow through it, you know, the technicality of it as far as the sweep of the pan, I thought that was spot on. Um, so I don't have a whole lot of complaints about it. It, it is what it is. It's a short five-second video that told the story, and that's all we're looking for. Yeah, so, uh, you know, again, we're not – 
we're not trying to single any person out as good or bad. That's not what our intentions are. We're just pointing and giving creative feedback, both positive and negative, uh, on, on these videos. And we don't want anyone to feel like that uh, we're, we're being harsh. And that's not our intent. We just want everyone to grow. And just understand we're not going to be able to get to everybody's video in these. Uh, we're going to actually do a, qu a quick little lightning round here towards the end and just capture everybody from the first week just because there's not that many and that's, that's good enough for this that we can, we can get them all in here quickly. Um, but, I mean, week after week, we may not feature you. We may. It just depends. But keep submitting, keep growing, and keep talking with the other filmmakers in this group because that's what it's about. Talk to each other. Comment on what you like and don't like. And, you know, see, see how this grows. Bill, do you have a I agree. And I, I do want to kind of give a shout out to, uh, to Gerald because I've seen him comment on just about everybody. And uh, I think that's fantastic. Uh, even the – live streams that you're doing during the week. That's not part of the challenge. We've got several members in this that are participating in that. And I know that makes you happy because we have more people to talk, but it, it really does get that conversation that we want. Exactly. And Gerald, I also appreciate you. You are, you are in this one solidly and we appreciate that kind of interaction. And, and you know, everybody else, I know that your time is valuable, but the more you interact with others, and the more you watch and participate, the, the better off you're going to be just by watching someone else's clip. And, and that's the beauty of these being only five to 10 seconds. It doesn't take that much time. But watching other people's stuff and then reading and participating in the comments, it will make you a better filmmaker and storyteller. And that's what this is about. Let's just do some quick comments on some of the other videos. I think uh, Jared had one that I guess is uh, – a backyard or or something there about anything quick on that it, it was a good pan uh, I didn't get quite what the story was other than we had a reveal yeah what I got out of it was you're, you're revealing kind of a, a, a yard and then you see a pile of, of rubble or trash or, or just debris there and but what I feel would would best serve that is uh, to use a tighter zoom on that, a tighter shot. Now, going to uh, the next one, I guess, Geneva with the, uh, with the toys. I loved it. Of course, that's the kind of stuff I'm interested in. <laughs> so I like the sweep one way and then the sweep back. Yeah, my, my comment was, uh, yes, it was a fast pan and, and quickly to show the full scene. I, I love that because you, you see part of the action. You're like, uh oh, something is pointed over here. I want to know what it is. And you quickly showed that. And that was a really good use of a fast pan there. And I thought that was, that was really well done. One from Kevin, um, it was, it was a, a perfect use of a pan. Uh, it was very nice. Uh, practice on getting that smoother shot. You know, it takes time uh, to to get a smooth pan. And again, I don't know if you're using a photo or a video head on your your tripod, but I mean, following the train was was exactly a good use of a pan. And so, if you can just work on getting that a little bit smoother, I, I think that's a solid shot. Exactly, I agree. And uh, that's the thing with the pan is there are several functions you can do. One which we've had a bunch of is the reveal. Uh, another is just uh, surroundings, and then this one was following the subject, which is that's what the pan is perfect for. Yep. And then, like Bill, you did this this nice shot where you revealed you had two pans in in your shot. The second one, you started off and you brought some sun rays in as you were painting around. Now, this is a great use of three D space in a single axis move. Now, single axis, we're just moving one way, but you created a depth in your, your uh, room there by having those light rays come in and you get to interact with those. And that was a great use of three dimensions in a single axis move. Uh, Magnus, uh, yours was really well done. I really like the use of the shadows in there. It, it was your, your use of lighting. I, I, I loved that shot. It was really nice. And that's exactly right. That's one of the things I was mentioning about a booze shot where you had lighting at the tail end of his 
clip that it would be kind of interesting to see a silhouette possibly rather than brighten up the foreground. And this did that with this. It, you had the silhouette of the drone as he swept through and it, it, it just made a very pleasant scene. So Lewis was the last one. So Lewis, yours is the, the, the last one we'll talk about here really briefly. Uh, I actually really, really liked this shot. Uh, you did a really good job at changing the story with the reveal. I mean, just starting off, oh, someone's taking down Christmas lights, and uh-oh, there's someone walking through the alley. What could that be? The only thing I would say that would make that maybe a little bit better, and you just have to try it, is just a little tighter, a little, little tighter zoom on that so that we're not – revealing so much as we go we want to just kind of just bring it in and maybe we just see kind of a just just a little less of the body or maybe just the head as it's walking down the alley but it's just something to try and there was a little bit of cheating in that one because it wasn't a true pan we had a little bit of pan and jib i would say <laughs> we're not going to count off we're, we're <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it Lewis, it was a great. The yeah, it was uh, corner was probably a little too big for the sweep that we wanted, but uh, honestly, it, it, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, and Lewis, since you did cheat and use a little bit of tilt with your pan, when we do the pan and tilt combined, we expect to see a more dramatic change. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> In closing, I thought everybody did a pretty good job uh, with, with what we had. And that's what we're trying to do is just learn these early primary techniques. Uh, myself, you know, that, that's what I'm trying to do. I am not Scott. Scott's a lot better than I am. This was so I could learn. Uh, like we were saying before, it's not about the gear, although some gear will help you do things better. We do try to give you alternatives for how you can do the same thing with a, a far more budget-friendly option or no budget. The, the, the point we're trying to make is don't let a piece of gear stop you from trying your shot because if you're doing that, you know, there's always a piece of gear out there that you could want and you'll never take the shot. So, Try to do it, even if you don't have the right gear, try to figure out how you can and pull off that shot because the shot will still be better than not having the shot at all. Exactly, and uh, in, again, in closing, let's uh, remind you, make sure you're subscribed to this channel that you're watching right now because Friday Scott will have week number four and we're moving along, it is pretty good. Uh, as we progress through this, just kind of clean some things up. We're going to be doing some of the stuff that we're doing now, again, but with certain assignments. And it's all part of the grander plan. Uh, but stay with us. Bring some people in that you know that may be interested. It's great for photographers trying to learn their thing. Uh, and as far as for cinematographers, it's great for them to become that mentor to us. And, uh, Scott, I'm going to let you finish it up. And I thought this was great. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I just want to agree with Bill there. I mean, we, we've had some really great entries. I mean, everybody that is participating is doing something more than someone who is not. So, I mean, kudos to every single one of you for just taking that little, just that walk of faith forward. And let's just put it out there because that is super hard sometimes to, to put your work out there and let someone talk about it. But it's going to make you better. And, and like Bill said, bring more people into this and it will help us all grow and we can all learn from each other. And like Bill said, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Make sure you're subscribing to his because we're going to be alternating back and forth. Uh, and then uh, thank you all for participating in this. We'll be doing week two's review here soon and we'll be able to put that one up uh, next week. We'll probably run just a couple weeks behind. We may catch up. We may not. We just depends. It, it, it just we, we like the, the anticipation that it, that it builds and it allows people just kind of to not be so focused on getting that result and just start working on the next challenge, the next challenge, because that's going to make you better. Gerald commented on the Facebook page earlier about uh, he, had, he did week three's move and he was so interested in it, he, he, was, he wanted to do another. And I'm, I'm perfectly good with that. When we do that so we can kind of keep it in order, if you want to post more than one video at this time, 
do it in your own comments. In yeah. other words, comment with reply your to video. yourself. Right. Comment with your video in that, and then reply to yourself and put a second, third, fourth. I don't care. Put some more up. I'm perfectly fine with it, especially early on uh, as we're building this community. All right. So just in the future, just know we're only going to be talking about four videos. If we don't get to you, don't worry. We'll probably get to you on the next one, the next one. We're going to have a lot of people in here. We want to pick out the the best use and the the best uh, way to discuss what can be done better or worse. Uh, we're just trying to round it out in what we're talking about. So don't feel bad if we don't get to you. Uh, we definitely are paying attention and so is everyone else. So once again, thank you all for being a part of this community. Week two's review is coming right around the corner. Week four is about to be uh, put out uh, at the end of this week. Week three, you should be working on your submission right now. So really just great job, everybody. And, you know, we appreciate it. So as I like to leave it, don't let your passions sit around your life. Let your life sit around your passions. Bill? Make 2019 a magical year. Boom. Bye, everybody.